All right, welcome to another Bragging Rights. This is a two-week hobby progress update uh, for what I got done on my lunch breaks and downtime. So starting off, I decided on basing for my cavalry moving forward for my Hungarians. I'm going to use uh, these bases, which are 30 millimeter by 60 millimeter ovals. This is a model I'm actually going to be using as a sniper. I waffled back and forth, and I did paint some snipers on foot, but um, I just I just like the character of this model so much, and I want to use it. So he is my sniper, and he's uh, uh, accompanied by a little assistant with a camo cloak. Uh, continuing on with some Hungarian stuff I got done. Uh, these are uh, some guys with looted uh, PPSH uh, SMGs. Uh, Hungarian border guard section with uh, flamers as well. Uh, flamers are good fun in this game as long as you don't take too many of them and annoy your opponent. Uh, they don't make Hungarian flamer models as far as I know, so these are actually um, Stalingrad uh, Germans. Uh, I purchased these up uh, from Great Escape, and I believe this is Great Escape's actual line, not them reselling Artisan. Um, but the, it comes with two flamers and two PPSH models. Uh, and they work fine for Hungarian. So, I mean, the, the Stahlhelm uh, looks really similar, if not the same, as the Hungarian helmet. So, uh, that's pretty cool. And I was able to field those in a game from Fortress Budapest. We played, uh, we've been playing through the scenarios. Uh, and it is, it is cool to get inspired to paint your next thing based on what's coming up in the scenarios, uh, which prompted me to bring in those flamers as the Carpathian Guard. Uh, something a little bit different, um, I created a few of these, and for full effect, I think I'd better do uh, this, lights. Um, these are little explosions I made, very low effort, it was fun. I bought some teddy bear stuffing, uh, I hot glued it to tea lights. These are 20 cent tea lights, uh, and that's it. Yeah, or no, not not quite that. I also sprayed them with a little black and then sprayed them with sealer. And it's fine. You know, this is all, all together, all components. You know, this is a 35 cent item. Uh, I think it's pretty cool for that investment. Use this for burning buildings, just to add some visual decor, uh, or use them for uh, representing destroyed tanks. Uh, and I made uh, two of them to start with, and I'm going to make some more because uh, it was quick and easy. Uh, continuing on with bolt action, different scale. Uh, I'm not going to show all the stuff I painted, but I paint, paint a lot more for my 172 Germans. Um, I don't know why I have multiple scales sometimes, but it is nice to. I, I don't. I don't really want to collect everything in 28 millimeter because of the expense and the time. Um, however, 172, I already have most of this sitting around, and it's just about putting a very simple paint job on it so I can try out different units. So we got a Kettengrad and a uh, light howitzer. It was fun to use both. Uh, I don't have any uh, any plans to get either in 28 millimeter, but it's fun to have them in this scale. Uh, more bolt action. For Fortress Budapest, I decided I needed more terrain. Uh, Fortress Budapest has something called assets that you can take um, as part of your army, uh, and one of those assets you can take is a minefield. So I took some of the reload canisters from the Soviet kit that are for the LMGs, Put them down as mines, although these are not very well concealed mines. Maybe I'll cover them with little leaves and things like that or put them behind bushes uh, and hide this a little more. Um, they are, it is marked with a, uh, a warning minefield sign, uh, which is one of, uh, I think it's co covered other Hague or Geneva. Uh, and it's uh, just a six foot diameter circle, so it fits the spec for the terrain size. Uh, and we tried it out with a game uh, a couple nights ago. It worked fine. Uh, it just became a piece of terrain that nobody went near, uh, which is fun to have. Um, more terrain. This is a little bit of a vehicle piece. So I ordered some failed prints on Etsy uh, for six bucks a piece, uh, and I was pretty happy with the results. I didn't know what they were. It was a little grab bag. Uh, but this is a Rolls-Royce armored car, I believe. I could be wrong. Let me know. Um, I put on a turret, I put it on a little too long, should be a little shorter, but that's okay. Um, it could be uh, in a tank rifle uh, that's been fitted on there. I painted on some bullet holes, um, probably should have drilled them out, but um, it was a late idea. And put a little rust and weather damage and things like that. Um, put a little battle seal to scene around it, barbed wire post. 
but this is just a fun little piece that um, my bolt action troops can use as cover um, and adds a little bit of realism, like uh, makes that battlefield feel lived in. Uh, another piece along the same exact line, um, another failed print that I purchased. Um, this is a wrecked and burnt out truck um, that's got like a, 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 a evidence of um, oil uh, that's spilled out after after the wreck. We've got a charred body inside there, an old piece of metal, just some some stuff that I had. You know, the pieces of metal are actually to cover up um, odd defects on the 3D cast, and then the cast came with like the bottom halves of many of the wheels were missing, the back wheels were missing all together. So it by itself kind of created this um, sunk in the mud look. Um, and I think it works pretty well. So you can imagine the fire uh, heated up the December mud, which was, uh, you know, f frozen. Uh, and then as it thawed, sunk down further, the oil kind of permeated uh, the water. Um, and, and that's the terrain piece. Don't know exactly what rules I'd use for it, probably just uh, a, a, an obstacle. Some more terrain. Sarissa makes uh, these plinths, which are pretty inexpensive. Um, I haven't yet put anything on top of this. I'll showcase it when I do. I'd like to put a um, kind of a Hungarian cavalry officer or something like that on it. It's going to find the right, right scale and the right model for it. Um, this one is a model of, I, I believe it's a, an Athena warrior uh, from Lucid Eye Productions. They have a ziggurat range. I think I'm remembering all of that correctly. Um, and it's a really cool heroic range, very evocative of kind of uh, uh, Warlords of Egyptus, kind of that chunky uh, 90s and early thousands uh, Warhammer style. Um, I didn't really have use for it in my historicals. Uh, so I thought a statue would be a really good way to use this model because I do like the model. This is going to be a statue that's standing somewhere in Budapest. Uh, not based on a historical statue, obviously. Um, some more Budapest stuff and more Sarissa. We have fountain number one. Um, this is a Sarissa fountain, simple dry brushes you can see. And then I put down some leaf scatter, some... Uh, Vallejo dark earth mud and then on top of that Vallejo still water so it's it's meant to be a mostly evaporated maybe even partially frozen maybe I could add some frost effects to it uh, December fountain uh, during Siege of Budapest and then we have another one more of the same you know just when you purchase the fountain kits you get both of these they go together really quickly and easily um, and it's a nice little product and uh, after priming uh, and and dry brushing, it's able. It's got a seal that's enough to hold in the still water and make sure it doesn't leak out. Um, it was a little bit of a. Uh, I was a little bit worried that that it might leak out, but it didn't. It all stayed in, which is really great. Uh, I am going to put those in city squares in Budapest. They're a little too ornate, I think, for most town scenes. So I don't know if I'm going to use it for some of my games. Uh, I did, uh, this was a learning process, I did uh, when I ordered um, some 3D prints from Etsy thinking hey these will be great for bolt action. One of the things I've learned is that many of the folks that are selling prints and selling sculpts are doing so at uh, closer to true scale. So that's all fine and good unless you're trying to mix it with uh, Warlord or equivalent company models. Um, it, it makes it look like that's 25 and this is 28, when really we all know that that Warlord is uh, a little chunky, a little upscaled. Um, so uh, one of the things that I've, I've been doing now is requesting 110% um, sizing for some of the popular 3D prints so that it comes in line with bolt action. Uh, so this one's painted up. It ends up looking really small, but I think it's still fine to field um, just, just uh, when needed. Uh, some more models I've done for the Hungarians. I've got a truck, second truck, not a lot to see here. Um, I did actually forget my color recipe that I used in the last truck and I tried something new and got halfway through and realized that eh, these are the wrong colors. It's coming out too, 
too high a contrast on the highlight. Um, that's okay. It's just a truck, 40 points. I'm not going to spend too much uh, time on it. I already spent quite a bit of money on it. Uh, I did put a driver in. This is one of the official drivers that Mad Bob offers, but um, limited stock, and I don't think he's ever casting them again. So uh, pick them up while you can. Uh, and the rest of it is a 3D print from Mad Bob, and I, I, I like the quality. I like ordering from him. I would definitely recommend it. Some of the pieces are a little soft uh, and make you worry as you're assembling, but I, I think they, they go fine once you've finished the process. Uh, another from Mad Bob we have here, and this was this was great. I was able to reach out to him and get kind of a special thing thrown in here. Um, this is a Turon 2 Hungarian made medium tank, kind of an equivalent uh, I think of as a Panzer 2 or some of the weaker Panzer 3s. Um, I did put mine with shirts in just because I, I like the look of it and also um, it's kind of sparse without it. Um, the, the, the track and the wheel carriages are, are a little sparse. There's, there's not a lot of visually there. Um, so I, I thought this looked, looked more menacing, uh, pretty cool. Um, I do plan to have a few of these without skirts though. Um, so I'm gonna have a little more visual variety. Variety. I did put a Hungarian flag on there, a little rough. So imagine just somebody slopped on some paint to do it. Um, and uh, this is a pretty cool tank. I'm gonna field it sometimes, who knows? I think I prefer the Zrini, which is like a howitzer um, type tank. Um, but I also got this turret, which allows me to field this as a turn three or as a Panzer III or Panzer IV equivalent. Um, the Hungarians can take German tanks, and I don't really love the, the thought of taking a German tank with my army, so what I wanna do is take an additional Hungarian painted tank using the German tank rules, which is what I plan to do with this. And it'll probably be a Panzer IV with shirts in, in most cases and a, a heavy anti-tank gun. Um, but this, this, was, this was cool. I didn't spend a lot of time on it. It's mostly just, uh, washes and dry brushing, uh, but it's it's rewarding working with Mad Bob Miniatures. Uh, okay, I think this is the final batch of stuff for this week. Actually, two more things, two more batches to show. So I painted these today uh, on lunch break. We have a, uh, or yesterday, I painted, I'm sorry, I based them today. Um, this is a uh, Hungarian made mace rocket thrower. Um, they've got the, uh, and a spotter that goes with it. And this is pretty cool. This is a weapon that was used in the Siege of Budapest. I think it was like a little more than a prototype, uh, but out of desperation, they used them. And apparently they're really great at penetrating armor. Um, so I had to get it. It's such a, I, I like the unique Hungarian models they have in the range. I don't love how boring the rules are in the Itali Italy and Axis book. Um, there's very little Hungarian flavor. But the Fortress Budapest book and the units in there and the, the new models are just really great, stellar. So um, that's my mace drawer. And I also painted up, um, and, you know, many of you will remember Dice Bag Annie from uh, the good old days of Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, I know I do, seeing, seeing her at, at ETC and our whole team had dice bags. Uh, unfortunately, I never got mine. Uh, never, never ordered it. I planned to, and I just didn't. Anyways, uh, she puts out uh, bolt action equivalent female figures now. So I picked up Soviet snipers and Soviet flamethrowers. These are, this is gonna be a flamethrower team. I'm hoping to field it for the first time in my next game. It should be pretty fun. I think flamers are a really great thing to have around as long as you don't overdo them. Um, very dangerous. Um, I, I have some bunker terrain, so it's nice to balance that out by having some flamers in the collection. Okay. Now we're on to the final stretch. Uh, these I painted on lunch break a couple of days ago. Very happy with the results and then immediately went and ordered more planes. Uh, these are uh, yaks for um, Blood Red Skies, uh, which I haven't yet played a game, but I did order the Battle of Britain starter set and I'm very, very eager to try it out. Um, these, these planes, I uh, didn't require assembly. I just had to prime them and get some some paint on them, and uh, they're pretty cool. I was uh, skeptical that they would look at, least at all all right, um, but they very easily uh, took paint. They got plenty of detail. I did a really quick job. Somebody could do a much more detailed job painting these, 
Uh, and I'm, like I said, I'm very, very looking forward to trying out the game and maybe even trying out a combined arms campaign. All right. Well, have a great week. Uh, I'll be back with more pretty soon. Thanks.